Hello everybody, my name is Matter Wellens. Welcome to Firewatch, the long-awaited- <gasps> Oh my god. Finally, lots of hype going into this from the past few months. For me personally, I was already drawn in by the E3 trailer last year. The voice acting and the environment in the trailer just seemed so unique at that time. It might have to do with the fact that I got to see it in a movie theater, which made it really immersive. But in any case, Firewatch is a single-player, first-person mystery set in the Wyoming wilderness, where your only emotional lifeline is the person on the other end of a handheld radio. That's pretty much what we have to go off of before we jump right in, but I do want to say that there is an interesting piece of information on this Steam store description. It says right here that Firewatch is a video game about adults having adult conversations about adult things. If you plan on playing with a younger gamer, then that might be good to know going in. Obviously, I can't control what you do, but if you are a younger gamer, then don't tell your parents or guardian that you are watching this. <laughs> Alright, ready? Let's go. Boulder, Colorado. You see Julia. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. So, what's your, you know, major? You slur the word major and it smells like Coors. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says. And I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours? She asks. She sniffs the air. Toxicology? Was that a burn? You ask. She says, definitely. Worried that she hurt your feelings. She asks you if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Oh goody goody. Are we going on a date? Or are we going to her apartment? Well, we're going somewhere. That's probably our truck. So I can kind of see from our arms that we're kind of a... We look like a pretty bulky dude. Nice to have some sort of frame of reference for what kind of person we are. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Aww, can't we have both? Mm. Well, let's get the beagle. Let's make her happy. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer. 9.30 p.m. and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Kids? They're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, 
a couple little idiots. Uh, that would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she is absolutely right. We're going camping? Thoroughfare Trailhead. Ooh, there are bears here. Thoroughfare Trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. It's a primitive backcountry trail. All right. Well, Julia's not with us. Nineteen eighty. It's a Thursday night, and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. <sighs> Ignore is better than mad, right? You don't touch each other all night. The next day, you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. 1981. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. <laughs> You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. Very nice. Two forks. Fire lookout. Tower. Eight more miles until. Nineteen eighty two. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from far away places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Oh, the other dog! Bucket gets kicked. B -b -b fuck The dog! Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. <sighs> Let's just scare him away. You scare him away. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare all three of you. He runs away. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say, okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut. 2,000 miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Convince her to not do it is bad. Agree if she commutes back and forth. Not ideal, but better than the other one. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her to not pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. 1985. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books 
that were important for her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. She might be remembering that one time we got mugged. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. Whoa. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. 1987. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car into the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days, you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days, you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family. They are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. <sighs> That's really hard. Moving her into a different place, it's almost like we don't care about her. But at the same time, we have to take care of ourselves too. Because something like this is extremely draining. As romantic as that would be, I would move her. Hiking might be a way that we use to de-stress from all the things going on in our life. And yeah, we do have a lot going on in our life, so... Oh my god. Her family agrees with your decision. You find a fantastic place in Boulder and move her there. You see her every day, then every other day. You go out to the bar with your old friends. It's not the same. You get the feeling that every wife tells her husband, if you ever put me in a home like Henry did, I will cut your balls off. You slowly decide to not see your old friends that much. 1989, Julia's sister, Susan, moves to Boulder to be close to her. She visits her every day. You go with her some of the time. Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you to use it if you won't see a therapist. You won't. You've always really liked Susan. Months go by. Bucket dies. Julia doesn't remember him when you tell her. Sometimes it takes her a minute to lock in on you. In the back of your mind, you believe it's because you see her less and less, and seeing her less and less makes her forget you more, you think. Summer is coming, and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. Oh 
Alright, and that is how we will begin. I assume we have been hired as a, uh, what is it? A ranger. To make sure that no forest fires are happening. It's kind of scary around here. Nighttime, too. Jonesy Lake. 0.7 miles to the west. Well, alright. It's just... Plains. Oh, we can hop over this, huh? Or, or not. I'm not sure what that prompt was. Supplies for two forks. It's a map. Two forks tower. This is thoroughfare tower. Come in. Okay, give me one. Give me one second. All right. All right. I know you're there. Your lights are on. Um. Hello. Whoever this is. It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? Whoa! People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I... Sleep? Forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Okay, you're probably out here because nobody back home can stand you. Which, after this brief introduction, is not a big shock. Ouch! Uh, I'll chalk that up to you being <laughs> tired and grumpy. Well, I'd better get some sleep then. One sec. Now it's my turn. Okay, good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you, but nine times out of ten, folks out here simply got dumped. Huh, is that it? Close? Good night. <laughs> good night. Welcome to the job. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> You probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Can I not look at that first? Oh. Still thinking of Julia, of course. April 28th. 1989. Tomorrow's the big day. Was going to drive up today, but there is a guy coming by from the university to grab another box of books. And he was a real pain in the ass about doing it before I left. Means I get to catch the Nuggets game tonight. Not that Phoenix isn't going to take this series in three straight. There's always next year. Not sure I'll get another chance to write until I'm settled in. I'm pretty sure the drive up to Lander is going to wipe me. May 1st. Hiked in last night, got lost a lot on the way here, and then met my boss, Delilah. Real piece of work. Hope we don't have to talk to each other much. Maybe I'm just grumpy from the lack of sleep. Didn't get a wink last night, and was pretty sure there was a bear sniffing around my tent. I actually made a good fire last night and flipped through Julia's journal. I still feel weird about having it, but Susan thinks it's a good way to... What's the word she used? Stay connected to the real jewels. But I was sitting there looking at it, and I don't know if it's a good idea for me to keep doing that. It didn't feel good. And yeah, like I said, I didn't sleep great after that. I didn't sleep great after that, but it was probably the bear. 
All right, it's late afternoon, and I gotta check in with the boss. I can't see it. Something I won't have a hell lot to do. There's Julia. And us, Henry. Oh, that's not good to have this around. Coffee. Why does this sink not have a uh, faucet? I don't know why. Cookbook. National Forest Guidebook. Water jug. It's a really old school pencil sharpener that you don't really see these days anymore. Birds of Wyoming. Whoa! Death strikes at two. Mystery novel. Can you put it back properly, please? The Patriots. Yeah, yeah, put it back all nicely. There you go. I'm surprised they used the word thermos because it's a it's a brand name. It's not a object. <laughs> God damn it! Can I put this down? There you go. Okay, so we're at Two Forks Watchtower. New job. Unpredictable boss. Flora. Blue spruce, cottonwood, lodgepole pine, aspen, birch shrub. Yeah, I would need to know that stuff, I guess. Map table. Okay, I think we're just about done here. Hey, sorry, guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Woo. Yeah, Jesus, I guess it's what, six? 6.45. Whoops. Jesus. Don't worry about it, that hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne? You use this to spot, you guessed it, fi- What the fuck? What is it? Nothing. Um, you, uh, you use this to- Oh, fuck me! Good God, language, lady. Out your west-facing window. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Uh, N. Are those fucking fireworks? West? Yep, those are indeed fireworks. I need you to confirm. Do you see them? Whoa, that's not legal, right? Uh, no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Go down there and set him straight. Do I write him a ticket? Easy there, Dirty Harry. Well? Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is 1234. It's actually that for all of them. Secure. Shut up. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Where is that cash box supposed to be? Do we get a map for that or... Is that a cave or is that a shadow? Well, guess we'll find out. Okay, these stairs are me- Birds. 
These stairs are messing me up already. What direction are we facing? Yeah, that would be good. Where the heck are we? Okay, we're over here. 306. So, and the map... West is over there. Yes, so we just keep following the road. The major road. To west. West? This way? Jonesy Lake. Yeah, this is the major road, right? Let me just confirm. I... I guess. It's not looking much like a road at all, actually. <laughs> Do you hear that? Is that just the fireworks, or...? Okay, we're a little bit off track, but same or correct general direction, so whatever. I am really, really bad with spatial direction, so... I hope this turns out okay for me. Oh. So earlier Delilah mentioned that she could see me from where she is. But I'm looking around now and I have no idea where she is. So that worries me a little bit. Should just be around the corner. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Wow, this hasn't... Wait, what time is it right now again? 86? Is it 86 right now? Ron, hey man, guy couldn't take it. So I locked up his look... So I locked up his lookout and put some stuff in the box. Found one of those bars you like. Hiking into the park, but let's get fucked when I'm back. Dave. Sure. Oh. <laughs> God damn it. Shh, yeah, okay. Cool. Some extra information on this map. Which includes... Personal notes, I guess. Amazing view. We should go check that out. Medicine wheel. So that should be on our own map now, right? Yeah, don't mark the amazing view, goddammit. <laughs> mark that one down, too. Eat? Oh, uh, okay. Deal with whoever is setting off fireworks. And that seems to be it. Okay, well, the fireworks are... I actually don't know where the fireworks are. I just assume that if we walk west, we'll find out. There's two ways we can go, to the amazing view or to medicine wheel. I kind of want to go to the amazing view right now. Is that okay? So we should be going this way-ish, I think. This is the split, right? So if we keep going that way, it'll be medicine wheel. This way should be the amazing view. She doesn't want to talk to us. That's cool. We can jog. Oh, amazing view. Yeah, it's beautiful. It would be more beautiful without that gigantic rock in the way, though. This vista is incredible. Which one? Uh, down the hill from my tower. There's a canyon and then the rest of... Well, everything. Yeah, you should see what I'm looking at. An eagle has been hovering over this gorge for the past 
hour? <laughs> and maybe if you're good, you can come by and see it at the end of the summer. Oh, can't talk to her no more. I guess... Mm, instead of going west, I want to go to Medicine Wheel. That might be where the fireworks are anyway, right? I don't know. Too bad we can't cut across. We gotta, like, follow the contour of the road. And we should probably... If this wasn't a video game, we should probably not be doing this because... It's very easy to get lost in here, it seems like. Yeah, I'm going down the right path. Kinda. Uh, no, maybe it's this way. Shit, I'm lost. <laughs> Ruby River. Oh, that's the medicine wheel. So what exactly is it? Wow, there's an old, um, I think it's called a medicine wheel out here. Yeah, it was made by Crow American Indians hundreds of years ago. There are lots of small ones. Um, have you ever been to Medicine Wheel Monument over in the Bighorns? Well, I sure haven't. Well, it's worth a three-hour detour on the way home in August. Uh, neat. I'll keep it in mind. Cool. So just little attractions that we don't have to go to, but we can if we would like, I guess. Yeah, let's... Let's go deal with whoever's... Whoever we gotta deal with. West? Can't really tell where they are anymore. <laughs> so, I'm at the medicine wheel. So, you're near your lookout? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, if I'm at this medicine wheel near my tower, where should I go to find the fireworks? They're to your northwest from there, I think. If you hike north from there, you should find the shale slide I mentioned. Northwest. Okay. Fine. Fine. You want to keep talking to me? It's kind of kind of lonely here. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. God damn it. This is why you don't run through bushes in real life. Oh. All right. I take it you fell prey to the Forest Service's big recruiting effort when it comes to, you know, how the hell you ended up out here. Actually, I went looking for the job. I just wanted to get out of town for a while. Well, you've come to the right place. Thanks to last summer, we got a bump in Forest Service budget and can actually afford to have you. What happened last summer that accounted for this, um, windfall? Jeez. I mean, the federal government almost let Yellowstone National Park burn to the ground? Ring a bell? Yellowstone is, like, what, 15 miles away? Why would they do that? Well, the short story is that for 60 years, we got very good at not letting forest fires happen. And then about 15 years ago, they decided that forest fires in wilderness areas like Yellowstone should be left to burn. So that's what they did. I can't believe you didn't hear about this. There were reports that the entire park was gone. Dan Rather telling the country that President Reagan didn't care on the nightly news. I mean, what the hell's he gonna do? Smoke jump in and snuff one out for the Gipper? So what should they have done? I don't even know. By the time the Yellowstone folks realized the little fires weren't gonna burn themselves out, a hundred thousand acres were gone. It's Yellowstone, you know? People don't want to touch it. But we touch it every single day. But hey, I got a 30 cents an hour raise because we can't have another fiasco. If the goddamn park can burn down again. Uh, this shale slide is steep. How do you expect me to get down this? I don't remember it being that bad. It's not even named on our topos. <laughs> it should be called Cripple Gulch, just east of gonna pee in a bag forever flats. Oh, is that Absorka Indian? Maybe, maybe Creek? Uh, it's actually English for not in my job description. Cripple Gulch. Got it marked. Whew. 
here goes nothing. This can't be safe. It's primitive gear. Why is it getting darker? 